All right. Good morning, everyone. This is Greg Arts from Punch Alert. Thank you for taking the time to join myself and, and Brian Warren from CHS today. Uh, it's going to be a very special podcast. Um, Brian is, I'll be introducing him uh, shortly. So I just want to give everyone a quick agenda and just go over some overview items for the call. Um, this will be our second kind of take on this format, which we did last month. went really well, and we were very lucky to have Kim Conroy from the YMCA of Charlotte on, talking about how they use Punch Alert and how relevant it is to their environment. Today is going to be similar, but we're going to be talking about healthcare and healthcare and safety and, and all the things that are going on there. Um, so if you have any questions, please chime them in. You can chime in at any time. There's a little questions uh, way for you to submit questions uh, through GoToWebinar, as well as raise your hand if you want to try and uh, have us address something mid-session. We're going to make sure we get to all the questions definitely at the end of the call. We try and make sure we allocate 60 minutes. We're going to try and make sure we get through all our prepared content in 45, so there's time for questions. But um, you know, we'll, we'll vary it a little bit as necessary. We are recording this. If you'd like to get the recording, please just let us know afterwards and we'll send you a link. Um, uh, what else? That is, so the format, the agenda. So I'm going to introduce Brian. We're going to talk briefly. Then I am going to provide an overview of Punch Alert. For those of you that are not familiar with what we do here, um, I want to spend 15 minutes or so providing that overview and a quick demonstration uh, and talk throughout a little bit about how that's related to healthcare. And then we're going to get into a deep Q&A with Brian. And talk about uh, and talk about CHS and healthcare safety, followed by the Q and A with the audience. So that's our agenda. Again, any questions? Please throw, chime them in. Okay, so uh, we're very lucky to have Brian Warren with us today. Brian is the director of corporate security at Carolina's Health System. For those of you that don't know, CHS is one of the largest healthcare organizations in the country, with 60,000 employees, 900 locations and seems to be growing. Brian is uh, an advisor to Punch Alert. He's a friend. He's also really one of the most knowledgeable people you'll, know, you'll, you'll meet or speak with in this industry. Anyone that knows him will say that. He's been in healthcare security for 27 years. He's been named as uh, either one of the top 20 or 30 influential voices by Forbes uh, and others in healthcare security. So really, he is you know, someone that is extremely knowledgeable. We come, we go to him for advice and feedback and ideas constantly, so we're very lucky to have him here today. So, uh, Brian, um, if we could just start off, if you don't mind, just tell us a little bit more about yourself, your role, uh, about CHS, and, and then also just for a moment about, you know, what, what brought your interest uh, to uh, Punch Alert. Sure, Greg, I appreciate it. Thanks so much, and uh, thanks for everyone for attending today. Um, so um, Carolina's Healthcare, as Greg had said, we're one of the largest uh, not-for-profit uh, health organizations in the U.S. currently. We've got over 900 locations to include physicians' offices, standalone MOBs, clinics, over 30 acute care facilities that are owned, leased, or managed. And uh, we have a, quite a varied footprint. Uh, we do everything from acute care, highly complex environments such as urban trauma centers down to small rural health clinics, but each one has their own specific safety and security needs. So we have to be fairly flexible in the way that we approach any one of these situations. Uh, so, you know, it's no longer gates, guns, and guards. Uh, you know, for many years that's what people thought security, that's all it was. Obviously there are so many other things that we have to take into account. Um, I'm very fortunate. I'm a Director of Corporate Security for Carolinas. I've been here uh, since 1994 in a variety of roles, primarily in the investigations and training division uh, and any kind of special projects. I work with regulatory agencies, so I've I've, uh, again, been very privileged to uh, have the opportunity to learn a lot about not only specific regulations as far as health care security, safety, and emergency management, but also how those agencies interact with each other. For example, I like to call it the domino effect. If you're in a hospital and you have an adverse event, it's not just going to be your state or local representatives from the regulatory agency that you're going to have to contend with. They have networks just like we all have professional networks. And so if you were to have an issue uh, in North Carolina, for example, and the North Carolina 
uh, regulatory body was involved, uh, it would not be surprising if OSHA was also involved, and then it would not be surprising if then uh, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare were also involved, and then possibly even the Joint Commission or DNV or some other third-party accrediting body. So uh, it's healthcare is a very different, very unique environment when it comes to security and safety, and one of the reasons that Punch Alert was so um, particularly of interest to me was that it met so many of the different standalone needs that healthcare runs into on a daily basis when it comes to um, a, a quick notification in a, of an event, workplace violence prevention, education, uh, all of these things that we run into in, in different areas, Punch Alert seemed to meet those and it, it was all in just one very nice, very clean package. Uh, I found out about Punch Alert from uh, working with our public-private partnerships here in Charlotte. Uh, we uh, routinely get together once a month all of the security leaders in the Charlotte region from all different industries, from all different critical infrastructures and key resources, from banking to education to retail to healthcare, to just discuss common trends, things that we all need to, to know about so that we can have a safer environment and a safer community, because that's really what it's all about. And as you hear more about Punch Alert, I think you'll understand that it really is about community. It's about increasing public safety for the entire community of first responders. It's not industry specific, but it certainly meets a lot of the industry specific regulations and requirements that healthcare is looking for. Uh, with that, Greg, I'll turn it back over to you so you can uh, talk to the folks about uh, Punch Alert. Great. Well, thanks so much, Brian. That was a terrific overview and introduction. So we'll get right back into that. And again, everyone, please think about questions that you have for Brian. There's going to be time, plenty of time to interact and get all your questions answered. I'm going to dive into Punch Alert right now. Again, for those of you that aren't really familiar with it, uh, Brian mentioned community. That is a big part of what we do. We call it, you know, we'll, we'll go through all the functions and features, but we like to think about Punch Alert as creating for your organizations a community of safety. And then more broadly, any individual that joins just downloads our app or uses it at, the, at their school or business or, or, or hospital as, as being a part of our broader community of safety. So functionally, let's just talk about what Punch Alert does. So it is a safety communications platform. What that means is Yes, it does those traditional mass notification functions, lots of mass notification solutions out there that will send text messages, that will send automated phone calls, that will send emails. We do offer the, that, that platform. But what really makes us unique is, well, yes, we're mobile-centric, so we'll talk a lot about the smartphone and why the smartphone is so important. But also, we're really trying to capture the full life cycle of any incident from beginning to end. Our goal, as we'll talk about, is to reduce response time. In order to do that, we need to make communication more efficient. So what Punch Alert really does is enable incident reporting, whether it's the panic button for reporting emergencies, or, or the tip button to report, post a tip, report an incident that may not even be a bad thing happening. It's just posting something as an FYI to the right people that need to know about it. But someone needs to report something, and that's when communication starts. And that's your two-way communication. Who is involved in that? Whoever needs to be, so at your organization, you can think about setting up who needs to be communicating about this incident. Of course, the person that reported it, but you set up responder teams, and those people can communicate, chat in the app to figure out what's going on. Is this something that's a false alarm? Is this something we can handle fairly easily or directly, like something medical related? Or is this something that might affect a large group of people in your organization? We need to do a mass action, an evacuation, what have you. You release that as a mass notification. Ultimately, you're doing this all full two-way mass communication all the way through resolution, and you have a full record of everything that's happened. So in summary, you are allowing your organization at multiple levels, your administrators and responders at the highest level, your employees or student population at the second level, and then all the way down to your community to be involved. At what, to what extent they're involved, it's fairly customizable, so we can get into that. Um, but that's how you really want to involve as many people as possible in this safety communications process so that you can really take out all the inefficiencies that are currently there uh, when it comes to uh, safety communication. So we'll talk about our emergency module and our tips and our announcements module as well. You can use Punch Alert on a day-to-day -day basis. So why we exist? We exist to solve this problem, which is we need to reduce response times. 
in, in, in 2014, the average uh, 911 response time was 10 minutes. And so this is the impact the FCC estimates that we can reduce it down to nine minutes. Now, obviously, we can try and help official responders reach the problem or reach the, the person that needs help as quickly as possible, get them there faster. But we also believe a big part of this solution is helping you all or whoever is involved or near a situation better communicate and better respond internally. From minute zero to minute 10 is so critical. Obviously, you want to get the police there as quickly as possible, but how are you coordinating that response on your campus, in your organization, on your floor, in your community even, to, to better uh, you know, reduce loss, obviously, and, and create better outcomes and faster outcomes. So that's what we're trying to do throughout Punch Alert. Now, we talk about mobile. Mobile does change things quite a bit, and we'll talk about how that really changes things in healthcare too. But when we think about mobile, obviously with an app, there's a lot more functionality than, than just a text message. You know, so we all get text messages. Now we're asking people to download an app as the next stage in this safety communication world. So, but by asking them to download an app, that's not as easy as it sounds. Even though it's free for them to download, you know, it still takes 30 seconds, what have you. You know, we don't like spending the time to do it. And then there's all those other questions. Is that using up my data? I don't feel like downloading another app. So that's why when we think about, we really, really focus on community because we want people to, when they download the app, whether they're being told to because their organization, their hospital, their school, YMCA, what have you, they're, they're telling everyone, hey, this is something we're adopting. Whether they make it an opt-in or not, we want people to realize that they're joining your private community, but they're also joining our broader Punch Alert public community, which is something they should enjoy being part of and be proud to be part of. So that's what we focus on throughout the product. That's what we continually try and improve upon every day. So how do you create your community of safety in Punch Alert? As, a, as an organization. Starts off with a few administrative functions. You're going to want to create your geofences. Geofences are important for a few different reasons, but at a high level, they route your emergencies properly. So let's say you're an organization like CHS with many different locations, right? 900 in, in Brian's case. So you're going to need to create different geofences for each of these locations. And the reason that's important is because if there's an incident at one location, certain people need to know. But if there's an incident at another location, other people might need to know. Also, you don't want to be tracking people. And this part, this one's important. You don't want to be tracking people when they're not in harm's way or their location isn't important to your organization. So we restrict the tracking of location to people that are actually checked in and also checked in during that emergency inside of a geofence for that organization. So those are some critical ways we use geofencing. Your responder team. Your responder team is really important. Now, some organizations like CHS already have these teams created. And so plugging those into Punch Alert is fairly easy. For other organizations, they really need to think about, who do I want this team to be? It's not always you know, your, who you might think. It's not always the police or fire. We kind of think of them as official responders. Sometimes they get notified immediately. But usually there's an internal responder team that does all the filtering. You don't want to be in an, in an environment where you're afraid to use our system. You need to use it for drills. You need to use it on a regular basis, not just the tips and announcements, the emergency module. You want to get really familiar with it because obviously if there's something big and real going on, you don't want to be fumbling around uh, unfamiliar with the platform. So you set up your internal responder team. That's a critical step. They do get their own training, much like admins do. And those folks uh, will become your internal experts on the platform. They'll be using it constantly, communicating, and they'll do all the filtering. So if one person reports an emergency, let's say it's an employee or maybe you even enable community, they're on site, they report something, it does not go to all of your employees or all of your community. It just goes to your responder team. Your responder team then has to make that decision after communicating, do we need to escalate this do we, or do we just resolve it? So that team is important. All right, and then the configurations. There's quite a few configurations, and we have a great training process that, uh, that Carol Tobias at our organization oversees. Um, but uh, what's important, well, I'll just highlight one thing, which is emergency plans. We all talk about emergency plans. A lot of organizations, most organizations have some kind of emergency plan, uh, usually paper that's printed out in some kind of booklet and some are t starting to digitize, but how many actually have it handy? 
So during an emergency, how many of those folks that are involved in an incident remember what do they need to do? So what we do is we allow you to set the categories, the types basically of incidents you want to use Punch Alert for, and you attach your emergency plans to those categories so they automatically go out during an emergency. That, along with the panic button and the obvious mass notifications, that, that, that emergency plan distribution is one of the most immediate, simple, but really critical benefits you'll get out of a platform like Punch Alert. Okay, so onboarding employees and community, you know, that comes after the initial stages. At a high level, what are you getting out of our platform? These six steps, I'm gonna demo some of these for you. Real-time location, you'll notice we do offer indoor location. That can be pretty critical because GPS, uh, when you're indoors, is not super accurate. And certainly not accurate enough to know if in an evacuation, is anyone still in the building? So those are the kind of questions we like to, to answer. And so we have a great solution for that using, uh, using iBeacon. And of course, with a smartphone app, we're enabling this rich media sharing so people can submit auto, audio, photos, and video. Um, that still goes to your responder team. They can decide what to do with it. But this is pretty important. They're already doing it anyway, so why not provide a platform like Punch Alert that allows you to manage it privately rather than allowing them to do it in a way where it's now posted to Twitter and who knows where else. It's been filtered. It's been Photoshopped. You have no real credible way of dealing with it. Uh, with Punch Alert, everything is uh, protected for you, so you know this can be used as evidence as necessary later. All right, so these are the main modules. Again, any questions along the way, please chime them in. All right, I think we're ready for a quick demo. For the demo purpose, I'm going to focus on mobile. I'll just show you a couple things on the web console, and then, again, any questions, chime in, and we can hopefully have time afterwards to dive into any other um, features you want to take a look at. All right, so I already have the web console open. And this is our landing page for the dashboard. And it's going to give you oversight over what's going on in your organization or your enterprise. So you can manage all your different locations together from one group interface. We call that an enterprise, like CHS has. And these are some geofences you can see. There's no banner, so there's no emergencies. There's no active tips. So quiet day. That's good. And you see your main modules here on the left. You've got your emergencies, your announcements, and your tips module. Those are your main ones. Your admin settings. I'll take you through a a few things in admin settings. For every organization, you've got your users to manage. And you can, of course, search through them, filter them. And every user has a certain amount of information available. Are they an administrator? Can they send announcements? What's their role in an emergency? So these are some of the things uh, you want to configure. And we can talk about onboarding if anyone has questions on that, a few different ways to do that. But this is your user page. Once you get set up and through the admin, you're fully self-sufficient, so you don't need to call us to do things like add users, remove users, block people, change their roles, and so on. All that's right here in the admin console. The locations are important, so just looking at geofencing. Sometimes people get a little confused about geofencing, that it's something complicated. You've got to go outside and do it uh, you know, on your property, and that's not the case. It's very simple to do. So just show you an example of how you would do it near my office. You do a quick search. You can switch to satellite if you prefer. You start dropping pins on a map. That's it. You name it, you save it. I'm not going to create another one right now, but you can see what they look like. You can time them, so maybe you don't want geofences to be active 24-7. So you can think about what, what geofences do I want to be active, which ones do I no longer need anymore, Let's say you have an event going on for one night, you can just create, create a geofence for the evening. So very simple. Uh, many other administrative things to show. I'm gonna just gonna jump ahead to archives, which I may come back to this after the mobile demo. But basically the, the point is every single incident in our system is archived. So, so there's a, a record of every single thing that happens. So I'll try and find a decent one. This one has an audio recording. So whether there's photos, video, emergency plans, Everything is captured from beginning to end, so you have that record. So you can print it out. You have communications logs for every single person involved. You can see who checked in, who is released to. So this is pretty important. And of course, you can export your images, your video, your audio. So now, as opposed to having you know, all those phone calls going back and forth, um, some people texting, some people using two-way radios, 
physical panic buttons, intercom systems. These are all great systems. We never tell anyone to take away any of these things. However, as much as you can move all of those incident-related communications over to Punch Alert, now you have a full record of exactly what happened. All right, let's move on to the mobile demo. I'm going to take a moment to put my phone on the screen. Does anyone have any questions while I'm doing that? I'll monitor that. Okay. Quick time check. All right, doing all right. Okay, so hopefully you can see my phone on the screen now. And you see the Punch Alert app here at the bottom. I'll pull it up. So a few things I'll show you. We're not going to go through everything, obviously, but I want to show you what it's like to report an emergency. Now, by default, it is using your current location. Okay, notice sometimes it takes a second to triangulate, especially when you're indoors. Now, the blue dot is where I am right now. The black pin is where you report an emergency. So it could be your current location, but maybe you want to report an emergency across the street. You can drop a map. You can search. And let's go ahead and hit the red button. Actually, I'm going to cancel that. The reason it's defaulting to punch technologies and you see my logo here is because I'm inside a geofence. So that is why. So it's constantly thinking about what's the smartest way to report an emergency for me right now. Okay. So you could override it. You know, there are ways we could talk about that. There are other features like text the 911. But I want to report an emergency to punch technologies now. I am a responder, but since I'm the person that reported it, I don't need to be getting all sorts of notifications. At this point, I've reported the emergency, I've categorized it as a fire, and there's an emergency plan available. Again, simple, it works, it gets your plans out to people that need it immediately. You can also see on the map, I dropped the pin over there, so the emergency is over there, but I'm over here. Now you can get directions to any of these locations, you can switch to satellite mode if you prefer. And if you really want to have a better view of where I am or who I am, you can view my profile, and this will tell you my role, what I look like my check-in time, the region I'm in, which is really the name of the geofence, and any beacons I'm near. This is your indoor location. So I'm going I'm to upload a picture of these beacons. As you can see, I'm very close to them. They're less than a meter away. Imagine this was labeled Greg's office or room 203 rather than demo 2 because they're my demo beacons and I travel with them. Now, if you needed to call me, you can see my number there. You can locate me on the map and so on. So, who has access to this emergency right now? Only internal responders. And I can see exactly, more specifically, who is involved in this. Right now, it's still just me. Other responders haven't checked in. In your organization, trust me, you'll have a bunch of people checking in right away once you do that. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start communicating as I would normally. Uh, suspicious activity. Don't mind my spelling. They might do that, might submit an audio recording. Uh, we have some activity on the first floor if you could send someone. Or maybe a photo or video. I'll take a little photo. Those are the beacons I'm near. So we can talk about those. All clear on floor one. Submit that. Okay, so all that content has gone into the emergency stream to responders. Now there's two other buttons I'll show you, the red button. This is for if I needed to call someone. So if I need to speak to a responder on my team, I can just pick, pick one of their names and call. Some, some organizations prefer to have 911 here, or maybe you have an emergency line that people want to call. So you can program this uh, however you need it to work for that organization. There's also an A here. This is pretty, we've been seeing organizations, our customers get a lot of use out of this recently. It's pretty new. It's an attendance module. Originally, we thought only our K-12 customers would use it. But it turns out a lot of our customers are using it. And the reason is it's a simple way to answer a question. In this case, attendance. A little form that allows you to say, I don't have everyone, I have everyone. So imagine you have a floor captain or a daycare center. Or, you know, you're in charge of making sure other people are accounted for during an emergency. Well, this is a great simple way of saying, I'm missing John Smith. I have everyone else, I'm missing John Smith. I'm going to submit that. And a couple things happen. Number one, you see I've submitted it. I could change it if I needed to, but I've submitted it. Responders get an entry that, so they know I've submitted it, and they can share that out with other people if they need to. But also there's this form behind the scenes that gets created that's really simple to look at during an emergency, after the emergency. So you can print it out and say, all right, every, 100 people filled out this form. This is who had everyone. This is who was missing people. You can cross-check everything. 
really simple, really effective. All right, that's optional. You may not need that, in which case you just have four buttons at the bottom. Okay, now let's just talk briefly about responders. Responders get these extra functions. You saw what I did with release. I didn't release it to employees. I could have. In fact, let's go do that. I'm not going to release it to official responders. But if I release it to employees, now a whole bunch of other people are getting mass notifications. Okay, and now other people might start checking in. For example, if I go to my user check-ins, you'll notice Brian Johnson just checked in. Looks suspiciously like me. It's actually my iPad, and it's an employee role. So now that we've released it to employees, those folks can check in. And I can start sending them content. I could do a lockdown. I can send an update, stay inside, whatever I need to tell folks. Notice I can send through other channels as well if you, if you, like to, if you wanted to send out text messages and other things. We can categorize the incident. So let's say... We initially categorized that as a fire, but now it's changed. And now I've changed it to an active shooter, and there are new emergency plans that get distributed. In this case, that was the real plan. There's a demo plan. So immediately getting that in folks' hands is pretty important. Also, I can look at all this content that's come in. So let's say I take a look at that photo, and I decide, you know what? Everyone needs to see this because it's a suspicious activity. Let's go ahead and share it. And that's it. Now I've gone ahead and shared it. I can see exactly who's checked in. And when all is clear, I'm going to go ahead and resolve the emergency. All clear, pulse alarm. That's going to send out an email summary to those people that need it. But other than that, it is gone from the app intentionally. Only administrators can go back to the web console, look at the full archive of exactly what happened. All right. So that's your quick demo of emergencies. I won't show too much on tips. Tips are very, you know, they're, we're, we're seeing customers get a lot of use out of them recently because they're, they're simple. They're, they're actually kind of fun even. You can use them for positive things. I think Brian's going to talk a little bit about he's had some really creative ideas on how to use this. But it's all customizable. So for each category, you can decide which categories you want, what image, and who needs to receive them. So people can submit content like that. They can submit a photo. They can comment on it and say, uh, you know, on our way or what have you. So it's a little simple social kind of way to manage things that are happening on property, all clear. And one of the things you'll think about as you start moving forward with Punch Alert is, how can I connect this to any other systems I already have? We have API points for pretty much every single function in our system, whether it's an emergency, a tip, an announcement. Is our announcement module? So you can really, uh, you can really get a benefit of that. Um, by connecting it to your other systems. Whether we do the integration or you already have a team and wants to use our API, you know, we'll find a good solution for that. All right. I'm going to take my uh, phone off the screen. Just looking at the time here. All right. One last thing before we dive into the Q&A with Brian is the announcement module. I just want to remind everyone that Punch Alert can be used for things that aren't incident related. So it's not an emergency. It's not even a tip. It's just I want to tell people that, you know, at 3 o'clock something's happening or there's weather coming, so, uh, you know, please be sure to, you know, we are closing the office an hour early. You can do that either from the app or the web. You can use predefined messages as well. You can send audio messages, attachments. You can enable responses. For that, people do need the app. But what's great is you can decide who you're sending it to, public or private. Maybe you want to send it to your public network. You can choose what lists you want to send it to. And for every message you can choose, I want to send push notifications, SMS, email, phone call, maybe even Twitter, maybe even your website. So that's fully at your control for each announcement. So these are your day-to-day -day announcements. If some people don't have the app, no problem, send, send a text message. And for each one, you'll know who read it, who didn't read it, and did they receive it? How long did it take to go out? What channels did you use? And so on. In this case, you can see I read it, I responded, and if you wanted to check the channels we used, you can drill down right there. Notice all the channels were successful. So that's your announcement module. All right, I know we went through a lot. So again, if any of that was confusing, please chime in with questions or feel free to get the recording afterwards. 
Uh, at this point, I'm going to move back into discussion with Brian. Appreciate that, Greg. Uh, and again, a lot of information. I, I guess a good recap uh, that that I would say when it comes to the security safety world is Punch Alert has taken all of the disparate ways that have really changed over the last few years. It used to be, you know, let, let's go back in time. If you had an emergency, you would use the, the old standby overhead PA system to page something overhead. Then you would have a call tree. So you would have, let's say, for example, my role and responsibility in an emergency is to call these four people. And then each of those four people, in turn, had four people to call. And while there was certainly duplication of notification, it was the best way at the time, given the technology, to get the, the notification of an event out as quickly as possible. Then we started seeing uh, the more computerized and, and some of your force multipliers through technology. Now everything has gone to social media. But Punch Alert really takes all of that and puts it into a single-use platform that is very intuitive to use. I know Greg showed a lot of information. You know, it was, it's drinking from a fire hose, I understand, during a webinar or a podcast like this. But it's in, it, anyone who uses Facebook, anyone who uses Twitter, uh, Instagram, they will immediately be at home with the functionality, with the buttons, with how to drive this app. It, and that was done purposefully because, again, we're looking at different generations in the workplace, but we're also looking at some industries specifically when you're looking at schools that you're, you're going to have a lot of students and they're already using social media all day, every day. So it really does get the message across. It gets the job done. It's what we need to do. However, at the same time, it's also something that they're not just going to download that and go, oh, well, it's too hard to figure out or, oh, well, I'm not going to use that. Uh, Greg also mentioned toward the, the end of his presentation uh, on the actual use of it, the announcement module. So uh, let, let me just give you a few innovative ideas that he and I have discussed over the last few months. Even though it does an outstanding job, and at the heart of it, it is a mobile panic button. It is a way to report an emergency quickly in a timely manner to get the right people involved and to tell you not only what's going on through rich media, through photos, video, audio, text, but also, more importantly, where it's actually happening. And that's really at the heart of what we as emergency responders are worried about. It also provides the mundane everyday ability to send announcements out. Now, it could be something like a weather event, and, and Greg uh, made mention of that as an example. Uh, we're going to close early today because of uh, an incoming snowstorm. But it can also be used for just the fun day-to-day -day announcements that a company, an organization might want to send something out. Uh, everyone remember we're having an ice cream social at 1 o'clock uh, down on the quad, for example. Or in healthcare, imagine this. Let's say, for example, that one of our accrediting agencies shows up for an unannounced visit. Uh, that post a tip could be used that A, the announcement button. You could immediately hit that and say, everyone please welcome the Joint Commission who just showed up in the main lobby of the hospital. So that went out to everyone. Everybody's going to see that announcement, and now they understand who's on the site and what their role and responsibility should be. So again, it does a lot more than just a simple, it's not just a panic button. There are so many other things you can do. Another thing is through, why should we focus just on reporting the bad things? For example, if Punch Alert was used in an organization, let's say that in a hospital, you know, the HCAP scores, we're, we're always worried about employee satisfaction, but most importantly, patient satisfaction. So think about by opening this up to truly make it more of a community-based notification platform, let's say that you offered the capability, which it already has it in there, that visitors to your healthcare campus or your school campus could simply download the app very quickly from a Q code, for example. Uh, hey, while you're on our campus, please be part of our safe and secure community, download the app for free, and we will push out any notifications to you if anything happens. Now you have the ability to not only let people know that an event is going on, and it could be an emergency, but it also gives them the ability to report to you. So uh, let, let's, let's 
expand on that. I'm a visitor to your hospital. I come in, I've downloaded the app because I'm going to be there for quite some time. Perhaps I have a loved one or an acquaintance in an ICU or a specialty. I'm going to be here for the next several weeks. And as I'm walking up, I get some great customer service from someone working at the hospital. Maybe somebody just really went out of their way with that extra mile above and beyond. How great would it be that I could hit that button, post a tip, and say, I just wanted to let you know that Mr. Smith was so nice and gave me directions to, to the cafeteria and even took the time to walk me down there. That could then be set up, that could be monitored by the organization, and that could be seen as recognition to find out who that was. These are just some of the ways that Punch Alert can use all of these different abilities that it has to stream information because it doesn't have to be an emergency and it doesn't have to be a, a dire circumstance. Uh, one of the other things that Greg mentioned, uh, it has a great ability for a scalable response. And by that I mean you, the person initiating the emergency, have the choice who it is released to and when. So until you have all the information together, perhaps you just want it to go out to your response team. But once you've verified the information, we do actually have a, a fire. We do actually have an active violence situation occurring. At that point, you can determine, or another of your responders that gets on the scene can determine, we need to release this to either the general public, we need to release it to the local first responding authorities. But you have that capability. It's not a, I've hit the button and now it's gone to everyone at one time and I can't bring it back you have the capability to set up those levels of who gets notified and when. Now there are, especially in healthcare, a lot of different levels, as I'm sure we're all aware of, that have worked in the industry, and, and this is true in other industries as well, of people that want to be notified, and everyone says at first, I want to be notified of everything, but uh, those folks that are not in the safety and security world, they realize quickly that uh, you will drown very fast if you want to be notified of every little thing. So we've set up the ability that, that our security team here at Carolina's Healthcare, we can notify one another, our leadership group only, of those important things when they occur, but then we can also then include a next level of administration as needed. We've also been able to go in and set it up to where if we need to, we can set a group and it would automatically notify our Office of General Counsel or our risk management or our PIO person with public information because, again, if it's something that's going to affect the brand of the organization, if it's something that's going to get into the local news, something that's going to be tweeted about or Facebook lived or whatever other technology, you have the ability to set a group up and maybe you call that, uh, for example, uh, PIO slash risk management responders. So once we determine that an issue is real, it, yes, it is definitely going to get some local news attention. In fact, the news van's pulling on scene now. You can select that and it will automatically send that notification out. And one of the other great things about Punch Alert is once you send that notification out, you can go back later and you can determine when it was sent out whom it was sent to, and whether or not they got the message. And that is so critically important in an after-event hot wash when somebody is trying to do any kind of a uh, root cause analysis or an investigation as to, okay, who knew about it, when did they know about it, and what action did they take? All of those things are already built into the app, which, again, that was one of the, the great things that we liked. We didn't have to try to cobble together multiple analog and digital technologies to make this happen. It all is on one platform, and once you learn the platform and use it for a little while, it's very, very simple to use. Um, other things, and I can just speak from my experience with using Punch Alert, uh, all of us have to be uh, budget conscious. Uh, you know, it, regardless of your industry, but particularly in healthcare right now, uh, this is a huge issue. Uh, there is no capital expenditure up front, which is great. Um, as far as installing hardwired panic buttons, uh, you don't have to worry about cabling runs. You don't have to worry about preventative maintenance and maintenance checks on those buttons. And what if somebody picks up and moves? What if this unit is going renovation and wires get cut? Since it's a truly mobile platform, you don't have to worry about those 
that button is there and now someone's accidentally disconnected the wire because as we all know it's better not to have a panic button than to have one that's not functional and hasn't been tested because it gives the false impression that that person's hitting that button expecting that help's coming when in fact it was disconnected several weeks ago because of a renovation in the IT closet or whatever the case may be. Punch alert avoids all those kind of situations and since it is truly portable it is so great for some of the unique aspects of some of our healthcare workers. For example, think about home healthcare workers. These are individuals that provide healthcare, but they are truly transient. They are never in the same facility. They are actually going to residences. They're going to people's homes, and they may go to that patient's home for a week, a month, six months, but once they finish, how could you move a, a hardwired panic button from one place to another? Now, there's a lot of ways to do it, but Punch Alert literally follows the person because it's on their device. And let's face it, everyone carries their smartphone with them wherever they go. If they get in trouble, they spot something suspicious, they can simply hit the button, and regardless of where they are, it's going to GPS. If it's in your geofence, as Greg uh, had mentioned earlier, it's going to notify based upon what you tell it. So if you're in this area, we want you to call this number. We want Punch Alert to notify this. But if you're outside of that, then just call 911. Or you can set it up to wherever you want, whatever makes sense for your organization. Uh, that's great not only for healthcare, but also for schools. And that's another unique situation that healthcare has. A lot of times we have schools on a hospital campus or vice versa. A school has a hospital on the educational campus. And students are very transient. They have classes in different places. They may have to come over and do some lab work, do some practicals. This allows it to follow them wherever they go. If they're having to park off-site, and again, parking is always an issue at healthcare and hospitals and at schools, it doesn't matter. Well, you know, what about code blue boxes? Code blue boxes are great, but they're only as good as the person that can reach it in a timely manner. This is like a portable code blue box that the person can take with them. So there are so many different aspects that we've looked at just in the healthcare industry that, at least to me, it just makes sense and it resolves a lot of the issues that we run into really on almost a daily basis as far as being able to provide a safe and secure environment and also meet and exceed some of the regulatory standards that are out there. And the last thing before I turn it back over to Greg and we'll, we'll take any questions specific is very recently, in, uh, in fact the first week of March of this year, so just a few weeks ago, the Joint Commission issued Sentinel Event Alert number 57. And for those of you in healthcare, you know that Joint Commission Sentinel Event Alerts should not be taken lightly. That is something that is sent out to give everyone the heads up that this is a focus point for this accrediting body. Well, Joint Commission sent out Sentinel Event Alert 57 early March of this year, a few weeks ago, about the leadership standard for creating and maintaining a culture of safety. And if ever an application met that requirement on the face of it, I'm telling you, this is one of the ways that you need to look at doing that because it gives you so many opportunities to impact the safety and security of not only your patients, but also your teammates and visitors that are on your campus. So with that, Greg, uh, let me turn it back to you and we can uh, dive into any specifics. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate that. And I think you, you covered uh, most of my questions, so I'm just gonna add one more, but I'm glad, I'm glad you really tackled all those points because I mean, I think everyone's hearing how, you know, your, your, your background, your expertise just from what you're describing. Uh, and how lucky we've been to, to, to learn from you and working with you in this space. One of the things I did want to ask, and then we'll get into everyone else's questions because we do have a, a good number coming in, so I appreciate that from everyone, um, is just workplace violence. Um, it makes sense, but it doesn't, it, it didn't, I didn't realize the facts until you uh, shared them with me, which was the fact that workplace violence uh, was four times more likely to happen in healthcare environments than in other industries. And obviously, because of that, uh, mitigation is is important, and, and 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 it's timely. And you told me about all the the regulations that are going on associated with that. So, my one question to you, and then we'll since you've covered everything else, and we'll dive into the audience is, could you just discuss workplace violence a little bit? What's going on there in healthcare? And and you know, obviously, how can Punch Alert help? But also, just in general, what's going on with workplace violence? Is it getting worse? 
why is this such a big problem? You know, sure. what can healthcare organizations or really any organization do to combat this? Sure. So, so workplace violence, Greg, certainly is not unique to healthcare by by any means. It can happen anytime, anywhere. But healthcare workplace violence does take some very unusual turns. Uh, and, and let me let me elaborate. In most industries, aside from healthcare, in the United States, when you're looking at manufacturing, industrial, retail, etc., most of the violence either comes from criminal activity, so imagine somebody holding up a convenience store or robbing a bank. You know, Everyone that works at the bank during a bank robbery, that's workplace violence for each one of those people, obviously. However, criminal activity is very rare in the healthcare environment. The vast majority of workplace violence in healthcare, which you alluded to, is the highest level of any industry, by the way. If you take all of the U.S. healthcare, uh, all of the U.S. industries and put them together, they still don't equal the, the rates of workplace violence that healthcare has. It's, it's just, it's so ingrained in healthcare, uh, it, it's, it's staggering the numbers. But the, the thing is, healthcare is unique that most of the workplace violence involves the patients or the family members that we're trying to help. Uh, that's that's definitely unique. So it's the the people that are here to receive our care, the people that we're here to take care of, that are causing the vast majority of the problems. In fact, OSHA estimates last year that approximately 80% of workplace violence in healthcare is patient related. Um, add to that. Think about the, the, the emergency departments uh, in a hospital, for example. Uh, that is just, those are powder kegs. You have very high emotions. You have people that are coming in that suffer from um, injuries from criminal activity. You have domestic violence situations. You have overdoses. You have all of these things happening. Then look at your other security sensitive areas in healthcare. We have a lot of things in healthcare that the bad guys, so to speak, want to get their hands on. We have a lot of drugs, the good drugs. We have a lot of money. We have uh, infants that somebody may attempt uh, an infant abduction. Uh, you know, we have things that are very unique. So it's not just that healthcare has high workplace violence rates. We also have a very high risk probability to negative impact ratio. Um, if I go in and steal some clothes from a store, a, a retail theft, Yes, that's important. That's loss prevention, and I'm not saying that that crime is, is is not wrong. But if you look at that and then factor it about stealing a baby, uh, you know, I mean, things are are completely different. So workplace violence in healthcare is a huge issue. It is growing. We're getting education out there, but this has been an issue for many many years. People are now becoming more comfortable about the ability to report workplace violence, and this Punch Alert app is one of those tools that I think would allow you to not only provide a very timely method of reporting these things before they get to a point of criticality. In other words, once you see some of the warning signs, you could hit the button. Hopefully, you could get somebody there to mitigate it before an injury occurred, before somebody you know takes it to the next level. But more importantly, healthcare security and safety practitioners have always looked for better ways to use metrics and key performance indicators. By using an app like this, it can aggregate that data and you can go in and actually mine it and say, we had this many activations for workplace violence through Punch Alert during this time period. You can then calculate your rates and once you have that benchmark, and that's crucial, you can show what you're doing to try to stop or at least mitigate some of those workplace violence, be it education, be it additional security responders, be it additional physical hardware like access control, but at least you need to know what the problem is before you attempt to try to solve it so you can tell whether or not you're having an impact on it. And that's one of the important things that a lot of us have been missing. We simply don't know how bad the problem is. We just don't know how many events go unreported and why was it not reported? Was it for the lack of the ability to report? People didn't want to get involved, etc. Punch Alert takes away a lot of those obstacles because it's literally pick it up, hit a button, and then it automatically generates and gets the right people involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for that, Brian. Yeah, that's it's it's really interesting that as much as we know, it's it's um, sometimes shocking to think about you know the incidents that are not reported and. And you know what that what that could be like. Um, so thanks for sharing that. 
Okay, so you definitely shared some great case studies, some real use. You shared some really innovative uses. I loved your wow card idea with, with the public and posting positive things. I, I think that's really important um, and something we're trying to really bake into our, our community uh, and, and help any customer um, leverage that kind of positive impact, not just the emergencies. So uh, at this point, we do have some questions coming in from the audience, so I'd love to let's start and tackle them. So Brian, hopefully you and I can kind of tackle them together here. Sure. Um, I'll start at the top of the list. So first question is, how will Punch Alert save time when it comes to first responders finding location of an emergency? With mobile phones, 911 does not know where you are, correct? Um, yeah, so that is that is just a very basic and shocking problem today in the state of 911. When you call 911, uh, they're really they don't know your exact location. Location is inaccurate. Uh, I don't know the exact figures. Are still saying it's 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 very very high. It's rare that they have an exact location. I think maybe 25 percent of the time, they really have don't any, don't even have a reliable location, which is why they always ask, "Where are you?" That's their first question. Um, now, it's just because the technology was built for really landline phones, not even cell phones, and much less smartphones. So, so yes, Punch Alert is providing responders with a much more accurate and real-time location awareness. So it's not a moment in time. If you're moving, that's important. Um, so yeah, it's using GPS, it's using iBeacon, as we stated, for indoor location awareness. That's pretty critical for location. Um, anything, uh, Brian, anything I missed on that, on that one? No, uh, and, and you're right. 911 can triangulate as close as possible, but you know one of the issues too, Greg, that that comes into this, um, people can keep their phone number now. So even if you change carriers, even if uh, and, and let's face it, a lot of people change phones routinely. Uh, mm -hmm. You may have an area code number that if you're calling, the area code is not going to tell you anything anymore. I could very easily have an area code from the West Coast, but I live in North Carolina. So you can't rely on some of the older ways that you used to be able to try to determine where this person's calling from. You're absolutely right. But the, the GPS function, and, and especially with the eye beacons, and you had brought it up earlier, if you just using Punch Alert as is, you're going to get a, a fairly close, uh, you know, um, and Greg, you can say how close, but a, a very close address of where you physically are. But using the eye beacons inside of a building or inside of a structure can literally pinpoint within a few feet of where you are. And so there are different ways that you can approach it. You can use it as is, but if you're in a multi-story building, for example, and you need to specify west wing, fourth floor, you can do that through the use of eye beacons and some additional information that they provide. Yep, yeah, absolutely, and it's within a few feet. And the multi-story use case you describe is exactly the big, you know, we're talking about saving time. If you know someone's in a building but you don't know what floor they're on, that can take quite a bit of time to find that person. So, yeah, I, I, there's some federal, there's some discussion at the national level about whether there should be law for indoor location awareness. What's crazy is they, they still haven't figured out just general awareness, you know, more accurate GPS location or leveraging GPS for a calling 911. So, you know, uh, so that's just the state of uh, 911. Now, with with Punch Alert, as Brian said, you know, if you're an organization, if you're inside a protected geofence, that's great. We have all this really accurate location. Or, or even if you're not, you report to an organization, they're going to know exactly where you are. And we do connect with uh, official responder groups as well. That said, we do have a text to 911 capability. So if you're not in one of our protected areas, you should look into text to 911. Just everybody should be aware of whether it's supported in their area or not. And Punch Alert will actually tell you that. So if you're not inside one of your protected areas, you're not reporting to an organization, you're just out and about, text to 911 is a way to silently report an emergency to 911. And we are using GPS to share your location so it is accurate. So something to think about. And you can contact us if you want more information. Okay, a couple questions from one individual. Um, I think I will take the first, and then uh, maybe Brian can take the second here. So one is, uh, most security officers carry two-way radios. Any two-way radio integrations? Um, it's a great question. No, we don't integrate with them in that your radio conversation is going to automatically go into Punch Alert. It's a very cool idea. Um, what we have found is that radios become more of a backup then punch alert. I mean, it depends on the situation. Radios obviously have all sorts of uses. But during an emergency, the reason I, I call it a backup is because 
with punch alert again there's a record of it you can include all the right people with radios the problems we hear are, oh I had my volume off I missed it uh, or maybe I had my volume on and I heard it but then too many people heard it uh, so we've, we've heard that problem with some of our school customers even here in town that rate students will overhear a radio message and it, they get freaked out uh, or about or they're hearing things they, they don't need to know so uh, and plus, with radios, you have to make sure that they work everywhere, and so you have to create repeaters. And so, one of you know our school customers, some of them have actually budgeted for punch alert by saying we're saving all this money on increasing our radio support. So I'm not saying radios aren't great; they are, and they should be continue to be used. But um, but I think it's in some situations better to think of them as a backup to to punch alert rather than the primary. That said, I think there are some cool things to do in the future, such as integrating. Um, so that's my point on two-way radios. Um, Brian, if, if you want to add to that, and then also there's another question about HIPAA. Would you mind sure. uh, sh addressing uh, those? Sure, no problem. And, and again, the two-way integration. As technology changes, again, I, I think you're right, Greg, there's going to be some opportunities for integration. Um, uh, the, I, I guess the, the limitation, if you will, on the two-way radio is just that. However, uh, we have found that you can also, um, you know, you do have to have a smart device, obviously, currently, to use Punch Alert because of the, the data that it sends because it's so media rich. But you can, uh, you know, use it with dispatch centers, which is what we've been able to do. So you can have Punch Alert monitored in a dispatch center. People can then use their smart devices, and then the dispatch center can then use the radio system to provide that level of information rather than actually push the punch alert itself to the individual responding officers, you can push it to a mm -hmm. static dispatching communication center who can then get the benefits of that without having to replace any kind of radio. So that's the yep. way that we've done it and that works really well. So as far yep. as HIPAA, so the, the two things I guess I would talk about HIPAA is, uh, it's like anything else, educate your staff not to put PHI because again, it is media rich. So if I'm using punch alert, and I decide to take a picture of a person and send it, then that's more of a staff education issue. Teach people that what you can and cannot do, obviously. Uh, as far as if any PHI does end up, any protected health information ends up on the punch alert for whatever reason, the nice thing is, and Greg had mentioned it very briefly, but once you resolve the issue, in other words, I'm on the scene, I started it, I hit the emergency button on my phone, Whatever I put on that phone, be it an audio recording, a photo of something, or even a text message, once it is resolved, it disappears off my phone. It no longer exists. I couldn't call it back up if I wanted to because everything has gone to a secured cloud server once the resolution button is hit. It, it disappears. So there is no latency. It's not like if I lost the phone later, somebody could get it and go through it. There's nothing there any longer. Now that's done for a lot of practical reasons because you don't want a phone to fill up obviously in the memory, but it also addresses this very critical point of there's no PHI on it once resolution is hit. And, and Greg, correct me if I misspeak, but that is, it goes to your <coughs> secure cloud location. You don't have to worry about it being on the device itself. That's correct. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Great. All right. So we have a few minutes left. So I don't know if we'll get to all these questions, but I do want to get to a couple more if we can. Um, let's look at this one. So one person's asking about costs. You know, what are the costs for a 30-person home care department, for example? Well, you know, as Brian mentioned, the, the, the cost is pretty straightforward and transparent. We do have two packages now. So there's a premium and an enterprise, but uh, it ranges between $2 and at most $4 per user per month. These are for your employees. If you have part-time employees, we can work out, you know, uh, discounts. If you have a lot, if you have a large number of uh, part-time employees, and then you can think about your public, your community. We don't charge for those. So as long as you're distributing your announcements, your interactions with them using our app or even using email, there's actually no cost at all for using uh, Punch Alert with the public or with your community. Uh, if you want to engage. Uh, some other channels like text messaging and voice, we do have a, a fee for that. But the base cost of Punch Alert is this usually $2 up to $4 for the full enterprise platform uh, per user per month. Generally paid annually, sometimes we do. Sometimes we do multi-year contracts, sometimes we go month to month, month to month. So we're pretty flexible in that, in that way. So 
cost is pretty uh, affordable. And as Brian said, there's no upfront. So we don't charge setup and training fees. We do include that. Um, and uh, yeah, and obviously no hardware other than the beacons if should you, you know, should you want to buy the beacons. Um, but those are also fairly inexpensive. We can get into that. All right, one last question, I think, uh, it's, as it's 12 o'clock. As Brian pointed out, Workplace violence is a definite issue, but workplace or school bullying seems to fall into that category. Is this a, is this a way for people to report bullying without fear of repercussion, i.e. violence, therefore stemming the fear factor that bullies use? That's a, that's a great question. Um, we've, we've heard this question from schools, although uh, our K-12 through schools have not rolled out to students in the past, although they've talked about it a lot. Obviously, our K our, our higher ed do. Uh, in K-12 they haven't, but we've had a lot of our customers talk about uh, certainly their upper school, their high school, rolling that out and bullying has come up. And we, we have created, obviously you can create categories, but one thing we'll be adding to the next version of Punch Alert, a little exclusive, there is a major new release coming this summer, uh, or actually late spring, and, uh, and one of the features that we will be adding is an anonymous option. So the organization, the school, the business, the hospital will have the ability to enable the anonymous option or not. But that, I think, will really allow for bullying to get reported without that fear of, uh, of repercussion. Even if we didn't enable anonymous, it's only getting reported to whoever the organization, the customer decides, should get it. So it's not like it's going out to other kids that can then see this publicly. But still, without anonymous, we know some people are afraid to report that kind of a thing. Um, and so the anonymous option should uh, should help. So, One thing too, um, Greg, that yeah. uh, in, in a similar vein, that's going to help in your institutions of higher learning in your colleges, uh, and, you know, whether they be uh, healthcare related or just on a college campus. With the changes a few years ago to the Clery Act and Title IX and the VAWA. Uh, register, uh, legislation that's Violence Against Women Act, uh, you know, one of the huge educational components of VAWA was if you're a bystander and you see a student that is engaged in some activities such as drinking or perhaps, you know, some kind of recreational drug use that might get them in trouble, you know, it, it it really strongly suggests that you as a bystander take some kind of action to try and get that person out of there. Now, you know, try to get them some help before some, some kind of sexual assault could occur. Punch Alert can fit that because then by using that, you as a bystander can simply report that anonymously, let somebody know, and then if it's on campus, if it's at a frat party, if, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of other ways that that could be used, not just in K through 12. Uh, and Clary Act and VAWA is definitely something that you know would would be a great use of this to meet and exceed those requirements. Hmm. That's a great point. Uh, Brian, if you could just ask one, answer one last question for the group, and then we'll let everyone uh, go for the morning. And again, I really appreciate your time. Uh, and that is why, if you could just talk about Punch Alert differentiation, and why did you choose Punch Alert over other uh, products out there? Sure. So uh, I, I guess the, the 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 two big points were ease of use. Because it is once you get it and you, you play with it, and Carol does a fantastic job on the training. I, I, I can't speak highly enough about that. But it is very intuitive. It just makes sense. If you're comfortable with a smartphone at all, if you've ever used Facebook or social media, you'll get it. The, the, it's very easy to understand. So ease of use was the first thing. And the second thing is it met or exceeded the needs of so many other disparate systems that we were able to show efficiencies as far as rather than having five or six or seven different systems out there, we could take those, put them all into one, and then we just had a much more efficient model, not only for the reporting, but it also took away a lot of the preventative maintenance. It took away a lot of the capital expenditures. You know, I, I don't have to run a wire or a panic button. Now it's just a matter of, oh, you're going to be working in this area. You need to download an app and put it on your phone. This is how it works. We do a training session and we're done. And then the other big thing was it's not just for people when they're at the work site. Obviously, organizationally, you're concerned about your, your teammates, your staff, your employees when they're at the work site. But this is also a huge employee satisfier because Punch Alert goes with them. If I leave, I get off work, I clock out, and I go to the grocery store, 
I can still use Punch Alert to call the police if I see something. And so we're taking care of employees not just when they're here, but we're truly caring about their well-being because they're a valuable asset, and you can demonstrate that because Punch Alert goes with them. And I think that was a huge intangible feature that I did not see in other products. Thank you, Brian. Well, again, I, I can't thank you enough for joining today, and thank you everybody that took the time uh, to uh, to join our discussion today. We'd love to connect with you all uh, individually if you have more questions for us. I know we didn't address all the questions, but we tried to get to as many of them as possible. Please send them in. Request one-on-one -on -one demonstrations. If you want a recording of this webinar, please let us know. And thanks, everyone, for your time. I hope you have a great day.